Welcome to the talk about the paper, Thousands of AI Authors on the Future of AI. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to talk to you about this project. I'm Fabienne. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Bonn, like Sophia said, and one of the authors of this paper. The other authors are Katja, Harlan, Stephen, Ben, and Jan. And this was a cooperation between the University of Bonn, the University of Oxford, and the NGO AI Impacts. The preprint for this paper is out, uh, up at uh, Archive, and we're currently preparing the submission to a journal. As we all know, AI is very relevant for society, and better predictions are important for better decisions. So in 2023, we did a survey to get predictions and some other assessments of AI researchers. We invited only AI researchers who had published at top publication venues and asked them questions about AI progress and the social impacts of AI. This was the third in a series of very similar surveys. The previous surveys were done in 2016 and 2022, and there were a couple of new things in 2023. We expanded from two to six publication venues. And in case you were wondering, we also looked at whether participants coming from the two original conferences had different opinions to the other four conferences, and they did not really differ. They were very similar. We also added a bunch of new questions, for example, scenarios of concern, traits of AI, and interpretability. The survey was conducted after quite an eventful year, including the launch of ChatGPT, a shift in public awareness of AI issues, including to widely signed and publicized AI safety letters, and also governments beginning to address questions of AI regulation. It's important to keep in mind that this survey is just one piece of the puzzle. Forecasting is hard. Our respondents were AI experts, but not forecasting experts. Their opinions are valuable because they are very familiar with the relevant technology, but these forecasts should be part of a broader set of evidence from sources such as trends in computer hardware, advancements in AI capabilities, economic analysis, and insights from forecasting experts. We invited AI researchers to our survey if they had published in one of these AI publication venues. We collected 20K names of AI researchers that qualified to take part, received 18.5 functioning email addresses that received an invitation, and had a participation rate of about 15%, which is normal for service of this size. So in the end, we had 2,778 AI researchers who took part. We ran the survey from October 5th to 24th in 2023, and we randomized a number of questions, partly to keep the survey short, so participants only got a subset of these questions, and also to account for framing effects. So, for example, we gave participants either the fixed probability framing or the fixed year framing. In the fixed probability framing, we asked, in which year is there a 10% chance that something can be automated? In which year is there a 50% chance? In which year is there a 90% chance? And in the fixed year framing, we asked, what is the probability that in 10 years something can be automated? What is the probability in 20 years and in 50 years? So everyone gave three-year probability pairs. And we then fit a gamma cumulative density function to each participant's answers and then calculated the mean function. I will show you what this looked like in a bit. Here you can see the structure of the survey. The beginning, that's the introduction. Then everyone got asked about the timing of human level performance. We had two different framings for this, high level machine intelligence and full automation of labor. And each of those framings had again, the fixed years framing or the fixed probability framing. We then split people up to keep the survey short um, and asked some people about how likely an intelligence explosion is. We asked some about how concerning a number of different scenarios are, how likely interpretability is. Then everyone got asked about the value of long-run impact of high-level machine intelligence. We then split people up again and asked some about the causes of progress. We asked some questions allowing us to extrapolate from progress rates. We asked about their disagreements with other AI researchers and misunderstandings the public might have about what speed they would prefer and feel most optimistic about, how likely a number of traits are in 20 years in AI. Then everybody got asked about um, asked to focus some tasks, either in the fixed years framing or fixed probabilities framing. We then asked some questions about AI safety. Um, asking to assess a specific AI safety argument and also to tell us whether they think AI safety research should be prioritized more or less than it currently is. We then asked some questions about human extinction and we had 
three different framings, uh, but they all asked how likely AI is to cause human extinction. We then asked some demographic questions, and that was it. And obviously, there's a lot more detail than I can cover in 20 minutes, um, so we will not discuss all of the results. I have split the results into questions about the progress of AI and questions on the social impact of AI. And I will now present the results on AI progress questions. Here you can see respondents' predictions for different milestones. The dot or square is the mean year with a 50% chance of a milestone being reached. And the intervals are the mean years with a 25% chance and a 75% chance of the milestone being reached. So the interval is the range expressed by participants and not our estimation uncertainty. We gave participants four occupations to forecast, truck driver, surgeon, retail salesperson, and AI researcher, and 39 tasks, but each participant only got four tasks to keep the survey short. So we only asked about four occupations. Here you can see AI researcher and surgeon were the top ones. I wouldn't be surprised if we had asked about mathematician, if maybe that would have topped those, because in general, you can see a pattern. I'm not going to go through all of these um, tasks, but in general, math-related tasks seem to um, be forecasted to take longer. And also robotics, tasks involving robotics. We gave 39 tasks and also two framings for full human-level automation here and here. And note, um, they gave very different results. Here you can see the uh, milestones furthest in the future. Most milestones were predicted to have better than even odds at happening within the next 10 years, though with wide range of plausible dates. For example, here we have 2033 beat humans at Go after the same experience playing, or 2031 win the Putnam Math competition. And here we see the um, milestones closer to now. We have, for example, 20th and 2030, write a New York Times bestseller, 2029, Ford Laundry, 2028, build payment processing, payment processing site from scratch. And you can see this graph in the paper and also descriptions of each task in the appendix. We are now going to take a closer look at HLMI, so high-level machine intelligence. We defined high-level machine intelligence as being achieved when unaided machines can accomplish every task better and more cheaply than human workers, ignore aspects of tasks for which being a human is intrinsically advantageous, for example, being accepted as a jury member. Think feasibility, not adoption. We ask for predictions assuming that human scientific activity continues without major negative disruption. And we aggregated the results by fitting um, gamma distributions like we did for individual tasks. And you can see that in the last survey in 2023, the year with a 50% chance was 2047. And in 2022, it was 2060. So timelines shortened by 13 years in the last year. What you can't see here is that there, were also, there was also a framing effect. In the fixed year frame, participants said that there was a 50% chance in 34 years, which was twice as far into the future as in the fixed probability frame, which said in 17 years. There was also an effect of demographics. So respondents who had done their undergrad in Asia expected HLMI 11 years earlier than other regions. And this was similar for the other um, human, general human level framing that we are going to look at now. I just want to make sure that we all understand the, the, the prediction is that in 50 years from now, most of the tasks will be automated, uh, at least based on the recent... That's right, by 2047. Uh, 2047, okay. This is when we ask with this um, framing, you're going to see now that results are quite different when we ask in a different framing. So the other framing, uh, which we called full automation of labor, was defined as, say, an occupation becomes fully automatable when unaided machines can accomplish it better and more cheaply than human workers. Ignore aspects of occupations for which being a human is intrinsically advantageous, for example, being accepted as a jury member. Think feasibility, not adoption. Say we have reached full automation of labor when all occupations are fully automatable. That is, when for any occupation, machines could be built to carry out the task better and more cheaply than human workers. Before we ask participants this question, we asked them about four different occupations. The ones I showed you before, truck driver, surgeon, retail salesperson, and AI researcher. And also to, uh, we asked them about what the last occupation to be automated might be and how long this would take. And when we asked in this way, we got a 50% chance 
of full automation in the year 2116. And in 22, this question got a 50% chance in um, 2164. So again, timeline shortened a lot by almost 50 years in the last year. And as you might have noticed, there's a large difference between the two framing framings. So HLMI here and V. I thought some more about why this is. And if you're interested, we can talk about this later. So one key takeaway here is the timelines got shorter. For high-level machine intelligence, they got shorter by 13 years in the last year. And for full automation of labor, they got shorter by 48 years in the last year. We also asked the same 32 tasks in 2022 and 2023. And these tasks got uh, shorter by one year on average. We asked uh, which half of respondents' careers saw faster progress in AI, and the majority said progress was faster in the second half of their time working in the field. And this has been true for all of the surveys. We asked, some people have argued the following, if AI systems do nearly all research and development, improvements in AI will accelerate the pace of technological progress, including further progress in AI. Over a short period, less than five years, this feedback loop could cause technological progress to become more than an order of magnitude faster. How likely do you find this argument to be broadly correct? And in all three years, a majority of respondents have thought that it's either quite likely, likely or an about even chance that technological progress becomes more than an order of magnitude faster within five years of high-level machine intelligence being achieved. We had two more questions related to an intelligence explosion. So here in the middle, you see the one we just talked about. And there was also this one and this one. And in some across these three questions, the median participant did not overall expect an intelligence explosion soon after HLMI, but gives, uh, did give substantial credence to it. Can you please elaborate on uh, intelligence explosion? What did you guys meant by that? We meant this feedback loop where soon after we reach a certain point, uh, maybe human level, we um, see very, very fast takeoff of intelligence. It's basically like that the As singularity intelligence was happen. exploding, basically. <laughs> okay. Okay. We also asked about um, how likely an AI is to have a number of different traits in 20 years. And you can see them here in order of decreasing probability. For example, a majority said that it's likely that in 20 years an AI will, um, can be jailbroken by illegal commands. So basically in 20 years from now, their prediction is that AI won't obey humans. Yeah. Jailbroken would be that it's just being misused. So oh, humans okay. are using it with illegal commands and the programmers did not intend to uh, have it used in this way. Understood. Like people are often doing now also with uh, AI programs, <laughs> trying to jailbreak them. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And uh, I'm just trying to understand like what, what, what they meant that why, why they put 20 years from now, if now, if even now people trying to jailbreak AI? Yes, so we asked about in 20 years because we wanted to know um, if any of these would change. So right now they can be jailbroken. And we wanted to also look into the future, not just um, the present, but also how much has changed in 20 years. Okay, basically. It's an interesting question, I think, because they are definitely going to be much more powerful. So it seems more important than before that they cannot be jailbroken. But interesting to see um, if they would be. And also, be, yeah, all of these. I'm not going to, uh, at least I wasn't planning to go through them all, but this was one example. So basically, the okay. fundamental AI safety problems unlikely will be resolved, or what they claim um, in the search. Yes, they will, will likely not be resolved. We asked how likely it will be for users in 2028 to understand the true reasons for AI systems making a particular choice. And they said, um, that's unlike. Now I'm going to present the results on the social impact of AI. We asked what amount of concern potential scenarios deserve, organized from most to least extreme concern. And the majority um, were substantially concerned about the following scenarios. AI makes it easy to spread false information, for example, deep fakes. AI systems manipulate large scale public opinion trends. Authoritarian rulers use AI to control their population. AI systems worsen economic inequality by disproportionately benefiting certain individuals. AI lets dangerous groups make powerful tools, for example, engineered viruses. And bias in AI systems make 
It's unjust situations worse. For example, AI systems learn to discriminate by gender or race in hiring processes. We also asked how good or bad for humans will high-level machine intelligence be. And we asked participants to assume for the sake of the question that HLMI will be built at some point. And the response options were extremely good, for example, rapid growth and human flourishing, on balance good, more or less neutral, on balance bad and extremely bad, for example, human extinction. And this figure shows a random selection of 800 responses on the positivity or negativity of long-run impacts of HLMI on humanity. And each vertical bar represents one participant. And the bars are sorted left to right by a weighted sum of probabilities corresponding to overall optimism. As you can see, responses range from extremely optimistic to extremely pessimistic. But it's also not straightforward to say what optimistic means. For example, this participant here gave a high credence to extremely good outcomes. But the rest of the credence was given completely to um, extremely bad outcomes. But most participants spread their credence across all five outcomes. So what is the proportion? Where is the majority there on like it said it will be a good outcome or bad outcome? That's a good question. That's the, la that's the next slide. So this is the same question. And here you can see the medians and the means. And looking at the medians, the median answer for how likely an extremely good outcome is was 10%. And the median answer for an extremely bad outcome was 5%. And this did not change um, across the two years. The means changed slightly from 2022 to 2023, shifting slightly away from the more extreme outcomes. And the error bars here are the standard error. We also asked three questions more specifically about human extinction. We had uh, one general question, question one, and two more specific questions. The general question said, what probability do you put on future AI advances causing human extinction or similarly permanent and severe disempowerment of the human species? And the median answer was 5%, which is consistent with the um, extremely bad option in uh, the last question. And then we had this more specific question, which asked the same but gave a, a particular reason why this might happen, which was um, human inability to control future advanced AI systems. So this should have a strictly lower probability, logically, but it did not. It had a higher probability, um, which seems to be the conjunction fallacy at work. We then had this question three, which is another specific case of question one, asking how likely this is to happen within the next 100 years. We had this question only in 2023. And the um, median answer was 5%, which suggests that the probability of extinction or something similarly bad, the bulk of the probability uh, seems to be in the next 100 years. And you can see the error bars again here for the means. Um, they're again the standard error. And the reason why it's longer for 2022 is that we had more participants in 2023. So um, our estimation uncertainty uh, was reduced. This is again the same question, and here you see how many participants gave a probability of 10% or higher for each of these different framings. So depending on how we asked, 38% to 51% of participants gave a probability of 10% or higher. We asked participants what rate of global AI progress over the next five years would make you feel most optimistic for humanity's future. Assume any changes in speed affects all projects equally. And there was disagreement on whether faster or slower progress would be preferable, but large divergence from the current speed was less popular. We asked how much should AI safety research be prioritized? And 70% of respondents thought AI safety research should be prioritized more than it currently is. And developments since 2022 um, did not seem to have substantially changed the proportion of participants who think AI safety should be prioritized more or much more. Um, these are my key takeaways. AI timelines got shorter for the tasks we asked respondents. These moved earlier on average by one year in the last year. High-level machine intelligence uh, moved down by 13 years in the last year. And full automation of labor moved down by 48 years um, in the last year. Concerning the social impacts of AI, the median probability for extremely good outcomes of high-level machine intelligence was given to be 10%, and for extremely bad outcomes, 5%. And 70% of respondents said that AI safety research should be prioritized more than it currently is.